So here's some good news if you're enjoying my C tutorials so far. Um, you know, the first 10 or so are basic stuff, working with arrays, working with user input, saving to files, reading from files, the basic stuff. And then uh, I recorded those actually a couple weeks ago, and today I had an opportunity, a little chance. Uh, the wife and kids are out of the house, so there's not a lot of noise here, so I can actually record some videos, and I, I try to get them a bunch done when I have opportunities like this. And uh, what I record were what I would consider fun stuff, stuff I've known how to do for years um, that uh, I don't think I've ever done videos on. And uh, that is cross-compiling. I just did videos on cross-compiling for Windows from Linux. So you're on a Linux machine, you write your C code, and you're going to cross-compile uh, an executable that can run on Windows. Um, I did one on that. I did one on doing that where there is no shell window. So if you want to know how to create a C application that runs on a uh, Windows machine and you want to compile it on Linux for Windows, and you don't want the shell to pop up, either because you're creating a GUI application or you just want it to run as a background process. I'm going to show you how to do that. Super simple. And then I also did one where I taught you how to uh, change the icons so that you don't just have a default application icon on a Windows machine. You don't do that on a Linux machine. You do that on a Windows machine because things work different on Linux. Personally, I think it's a better way of doing it. But on Windows, you can embed icons into your applications. I show you how to do that from a Linux machine. Uh, I've recorded those tutorials now, I just need to get to a Windows machine to actually show you them actually running on a Windows machine. But those videos are done. And then I did tutorials on cross-compiling for different architectures. I show you how to cross-compile for an ARM architecture. So if you are compiling on a desktop and you want to compile for um, you know, Raspberry Pi or your modem or router, you, I'm going to show you how to compile for those things. Um, and it's easier than you think. And I show how to do it with ARM, but uh, there are compilers. Uh, that we're using, there's different options for a bunch of different architectures. I mainly have done ARM in the past, and I once had, I think, it was either a router, I think it was a, the, the wall outlet I did years ago. I had a, a smart wall outlet that I ended up frying. Um, but I think it ran MIPS, and I did a MIPS compiler for that. But the same process, you just choose the MIPS compiler rather than the ARM compiler. I show you how to do that, but then I also show you how to cross compile for some ARM architectures, these stripped down or non standard file systems. Uh, sometimes it can make it harder for you to have certain applications cross-compiled that are linked. So I show how you do statically um, linked uh, instead of dynamically linked applications. So in this particular case, I show you how to compile a C application that you can run on an Android ARM device. So those tutorials, I just recorded them all, and um, they'll be up you know, towards the end of this series again. So I think uh, there's 15 in total, so the first 10 are just basic stuff, and then after that we start getting into... Uh, those cross-compiling for different architectures or different operating systems. And I find that sort of stuff interesting. And, and I just love, you know, how easy it is once you know how to do it. You know, you write a C application, and there's no reason it can't run on anything in most cases. Again, uh, unless you're specifically compiling something, you're writing something for something specific. And I try to explain this to people, you know, unless you're getting really, 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 really low-level stuff, uh, basic applications, there's no reason that they shouldn't run on multiple uh, platforms. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of tweaking, uh, but for the most part, it doesn't matter unless you're specifically looking at something like, like if you're writing something to create, to change the Windows uh, wallpaper on your Windows desktop. Well, now you're, you're writing something to specifically interact with that application. Obviously, on Linux, you're going to have a different uh, background application, uh, and on Mac, another one. So you're specifically interacting with something so you would have to write the code for each of those. But if you're just doing stuff where you're getting user input, saving it to files, retrieving files, searching for files, you know, basic programming stuff, that stuff is universal. You write it once and it just, you just need to recompile it for different architectures, different operating systems. And you can easily do that from a Linux machine unless you're trying to compile for um, Mac OS. Um, as far as I know, and if you know a way, please let me know in the comments below. I don't think you can compile for a Mac OS on a Linux or anything but a Mac. So you have to buy their systems to compile for them. I don't know why anyone programs specifically for them. Um, so, so yeah, uh, if you're trying to compile something for uh, an Apple device, um, unless I'm wrong, you have to compile it on an Apple machine. Um, I don't know the details of that. I just have never seen a compiler that will cross-compile for you as far as C anyway. Obviously, you can 
you know, write bash scripts and bash scripts will run on anything that run bash runs on and bash runs on everything. Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, um, you know, whatever. So anyway, I hope you're excited about these. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Again, C is not my best language. So, uh, you know, a lot of the coding is, is very basic stuff that just, you know, but the basics are what you use 99% of the time when you're programming, right? So, so I think the more interesting stuff is the cross-compiling. So I hope you're looking forward to that. They're all recorded, and they'll be up soon. If you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get them sooner than others. Uh, and again, thanks for watching. I hope that you have a great day.